Okay. Namaste to all. Uh, welcome to another week, Creative Weekend Talk. And today marks our 127th episode of uh, Creative Online Talk. And today's topic on ear discharge. Our special guest today is none other than uh, Dr. Harshavardhan N. Reddy, sir, an expert in the field who will shed light on this matter. Creative. Creative is more than just a gathering. It's a community of like-minded individual. Together, we explore non-textual, non-academic, and non-syllabus concepts, pushing our mind to the unreachable horizon. Our aim is to build constructive thinking on various domains. And we invite each of you to join us on this journey behind the ordinary. For those unable to attend in person, don't worry. We are live streaming our talk on YouTube channel, Creative GBD. You can be an active part of the conversation by tuning in at the end of the session. Today's, in, uh, today's speaker, to introduce today's speaker, I call Harsha, Creative Volunteer and uh, st uh, Engineering Student at RV College, Bangalore. Over to you, Harsha. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, today we are, hello everyone, myself Harsha. And today we are going to introduce the speaker. Today, today's speaker is Harsha Vardhan and Reddy. He has completed his primary schooling at the government higher primary school, Kadabur. And he has completed his high school in NAS High School, Deepalia. He has completed his uh, pre-university courses in National College, Gauri Bidnur. He has uh, graduated uh, MBBS in 1994 at Kast Kasturba Medical College, Mangalore. He has completed his MS in the field of ENT in 21 at Sri Devraj Urus Medical College, Kolar. He has worked as an assistant professor in Sri Devraj Urus Medical College from 2001 to 2002. He has also worked in national health system that is in UK in 23 to 26. He, now, at present, he has joined Ramaya Medical College in 2006 and he has uh, working uh, there uh, so, since 2006. Thank you. Thank welcome you, sir, for this talk. Thank you, Harsha. We welcome you, you, sir. And uh, I welcome you. all the participants for today's session. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, in this introduction and uh, uh, inviting me to take part in this uh, uh, talk. As an alumni of uh, National College, I feel proud, proud to be able to um, contribute to the academic testing in whatever way I can. And uh, let me start uh, by thanking you all. Uh, my topic will be, shall I start with the topic? Am I audible? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. You can start. Yeah. Today's my topic is about uh, ear discharge. Uh, I'll just generally talk in terms about the ear discharge and what and all can cause ear discharge and when to like when to be uh, you need to be aware of what consequences it can happen because of the ear discharge, which need to be second taken seriously and which discharges can be ignored or ignored in the sense of uh, uh, it needs uh, some sort of attention. But it can which which can wait and which cannot wait. Okay, in that context, uh, I'll just share some uh, uh, just uh, can I just uh, share uh, this? Yes, sir. You can. Yeah, just a moment. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, my link as I think it's not working. Uh, am I audible, madam? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll uh, start sharing the screen. Yes, sir. So if you look at the 
year as a whole, as a whole. Uh, this part what you are seeing outside is a external part external ear which gathers the sound from the atmosphere and then these tunnels are it just take all the uh, sound energy and then it concentrates towards the canal this is the external ear this is the external ear canal and then this is the ear drum so the sound from the environment is concentrated by the external ear and is concentrated into the external artery canal that is ear canal and then those waves come and hit this ear drum it's a tympanic membrane we call it as tympanic membrane in layman's term it's called as ear drum and this drum is connected to three small pieces of bones these are the smallest bones in the body they are in an alignment and this sound is which is a mechanical energy acoustic energy converted into mechanical energy and this mechanical energy will be transmitted into the inner ear which will then again that mechanical energy will be converted into electrical energy from here the impulses will be carried by the nerve into the brain and then that will be interpreted as sound here also has a role in balance which is taken care by this part we will not go into those details now because i am just highlighting the fact that this ear discharge can be a consequence which can give rise to complications of this balance organ and then here is the brain just above this bone is a brain so it can give rise to complications of the brain and also a major vessel which carries the blood supply to the brain and from the brain to the heart are very close by to this ear so there are too many important and vital structures very close to this ear so they all can get uh, affected by the pathology in this ear so ear discharge when we say ear discharge it can be from anywhere it can either come from just outside the skin also can give rise to ear discharge and then it can be from the mid ear middle part of the ear and if mid ear is again connected to other things and also it can sometimes this bone get fractured and then the fluids around the brain can come into the ear and can become discharged from the ear we call it as csf potoria that is cerebro spinal fluid which can come into the external artery canal and become cerebro spinal fluid otoria otoria means discharge from the ear so any simple infections uh, like a uh, fungal infection of the skin like anywhere else in the body can give rise to increased irritation itching and then some sort of wetness and discharge that will be just like a, a fluid okay it's just clear fluid anything which is involved with this skin irritation and inflammation infection usually give rise to sort of a clear fluid discharge so that need not be worried unless it give rise to a lot of pain which uh, happens in case of a fungal infections fungal infections can give rise to uh, severe pain because the one of the features of the skin of this external auditory canal is the skin is very very firmly adherent to the underlying structure like bone and here are the cartilage so it's very firmly adherent so even a small amount of inflammation or edema can give rise to severe pain because there is no room for it to expand so it will give rise to pain so clear discharge can be that or even any other uh, like uh, inflammation of the external artery canal like otitis externa what we call if it is non bacterial it give rise to serious discharge that is clear fluid watery discharge if it becomes infected and becomes first abscess like a pharyngeal air follicle infection air follicles are present in the outer one third of the ear canal okay only the outer one third the inner it two third there are no hair follicles so here if the ear follicle get infected then it can become uh, what we call it as a uh, pharyngeal so that will be giving rise to severe pain and then once it becomes an abscess that means collection of pus that pus will be discharged it has to burst open and get come out it comes out as a prank pus 
frank pus is like anywhere else in the body anywhere else in the skin whenever there is a uh, abscess there it will be, be like a pus so it will be frank pus if other than this if there is a discharge which is sticky that means like you see in a, a normal cold when the nasal discharge becomes very sticky after few days three two to three days that same amount of consistency discharge is coming means it has to come from the mid layer it cannot be from the external layer so this has to be very clear we have to remember this if there is any discharge which is very sticky or uh, when you try to clean it it forms a string and then snaps that means it is mucoid discharge if it is uh, white it is just mucoid discharge or if it is colorless if it is yellow or green then it is mucopurulent that means there is mucoid element with purulence that means there is a bacterial infection of the mid layer cleft we call mid layer cleft this is a mid layer proper and then there is a tube connecting this you can see a pink tube here eustachian tube this connects the mid layer to the back of the nose so this tube can get infected and there is bone behind the ear called as mastoid bone that can also be infected so all these things infections in this anywhere of this which is lined by the mucosa mucosa is the one which you see in the oral cavity nose throat and all that's mucosa this part is lined by skin so you will not get any mucosal discharge from the external ear so it has to come from the mid ear so that's the mucoid or mucopurulent discharge and then there is blood frank blood can come from the ear that's also comes as a discharge that we call it as bleeding from the ear or bloody discharge if it is associated with any other uh, type of discharge like serous or mucoid then you call it as bloody discharge if it is frank blood you call it as bleeding from the ear okay so it can be from the external artery canal like when we try to do some cleaning with sharp objects or uh, other objects or accidentally somebody hits you and then it gets damaged the skin get damaged or even the drum gets ruptured then you might get a little bit of blood the majority of the bleeding happens because of road traffic accidents and trauma trauma to the mainly the bone the bone gets fractured then the structures in and around the bone gets involved the skin will get lacerated that means it will get ruptured and the vessels will start bleeding all the blood will come out into the external artery canal if there is communication and also part of it will if there is communication will get collected in the mid layer so whatever is in the external artery it will come into the external artery canal will come out so that will be frank blood so usually in road traffic accident there will be fracture of one of these bones either below or up so usually in those cases we need to be careful not to do any cleaning and all those things when we see that sort of a blood associated discharge you should be very careful unless there is a history of road traffic accidents or if there is a clear history that the person himself injured while trying to clean or somebody abruptly pushed the earbud while they are cleaning or something like that then you should not try to clean this on your own so the discharge comes from here can be the mucopurulence can be due to two factors one is called as safe type of chronic separative otitis media that is a hole in the drum usually when it starts it starts as a in childhood it starts as an infection of the mid layer the usual uh, root of the infection is through the eustachian tube it comes from the nose goes to the uh, back of the nose from there it the infection comes through this eustachian tube into the mid layer and from here infection of this lining happens and then slowly there will be build up of pus with that uh, ear discharge that is mucoid discharge becomes mucopurulent and then that causes severe pain and then the drum will bulge and then it will rupture so initially when it ruptures as there is lot of infection in and around this drum and there is lot of inflammation there will be some amount of blood 
to start with and then the frank mucopurulent discharge comes out this is the beginning and this episodes for whatever may be the reason if there is a problem with the back of the nose because of what we called as uh, adenoids adenoids is similar to tonsils tonsils are there in the oral cavity that is mouth on either side of the mouth and similarly these lymphatic tissues are there on, at the back of the nose also so they become enlarged they physiologically enlarge and then some in some children it will become pathologically enlarged and usually they will be regressing by the age of 6 years and so after that it will slowly regress and by 12 years they usually disappear if they don't disappear or if they become excessively hypertrophied or increase in size they usually block this tube on the nasal side once it gets blocked the normal clearance activity and patency is affected so because of that the infection or the infective organisms gain access to this middle ear and cause repeated infections so once they infect the ear the infection keeps happening on and off on and off on and off so it won't give time for this perforation to heal and it will become a bigger and bigger perforation and then ultimately it will become non healing that means it will not heal on its own it will not close on its own if it is a first time second time and if the infection settles down it usually heals but if it becomes recurrent in uh, injuries because of this and then recurrent infections giving rise to recurrent ear discharge it might become a permanent perforation the ear drum has two components one is this what we see one is the above one this this part is not most of it is not seen so only this part is seen so if the infection or pathology happens in this area this usually becomes a complicated one we call this as unsafe csvm or which is not very safe in a sense it can cause complications lot of complications i'll come to that so that's the problem with the ear discharge once it becomes this problem in this area then the discharge will be continuous if the problem is here pathology is here in this part of the drum they are on and off that means the discharge starts and then it continues for some time either the person becomes say like he will fight the organism and get over the organism and that will heal and then he stop after the time or they take go to a the ent practitioner or general physician and then they will treat the patient and the infection with medications antibiotics and things like that and then the infection stops and then for few months a few weeks depending on the source the person becomes symptom free that means there will be no ear discharge again another infection either through this or by water entering from the external artery canal into the through the drum into the middle ear then again it will carry the infection and it will also can get infected so this keeps happening uh, on and off that means there is no continuous discharge there will be lot of discharge free periods and also discharge free periods will be longer usually but in case of unsafe csvm when the problem is pathology is here then the discharge will be continuous the amount will be less but the discharge is continuous that means every day when they the patient cleans the ear there will be some amount of wetness or discharge will be seen and that is usually foul smelling okay that doesn't mean that the discharge from ear need not be foul smelling it can be depending on the organism or the bacteria which causes the infection sometimes it can also be foul smelling but usually it is not okay so they go on getting this treatment and then they even after treatment this usually doesn't subside completely it becomes less and lesser but it will continue to be some amount of discharge will be there unless the pathology is completely removed that needs to be addressed by surgery okay usually the discharge from safe type is copious that means it will be plentiful it usually comes out of the ear i'll just share another uh, image with you
can carry on sir yeah yeah there is an issue with my power this thing so i am just going to share again so am i back yes sir yes sir yeah 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 sorry sorry there was power issue power went off so i just have to... right so can you see this here now you can see this discharge is it clear sir yes sir okay so this type of discharge you see in safe type of uh, csto that is chronic separative otitis media this comes out usually they have to clean this uh, quite a few times in a day and in spite of that if they put a cotton it will soak and then that will keep coming out okay so this is a type of discharge is we see in uh, chronic separative otitis media safe type non safe type Uh, I'll show you some diagrams of uh, safe type before I go ahead and uh, discuss. This is a normal uh, ear drum, so that we can understand where the problem is. See, this is a hole of the ear drum, and this part. where i am marking it what you can see as a thin drum is a part which is usually seen majority of it is seen it is it looks like translucent and this part is a main which is causing unsafe csnr uh, cholesteatoma they call it as cholesteatoma so we will not go into technical terms by the way so if the discharge comes from this part if the perforation is in this part is called as safe if there is any pathology above this this line in this part we call it as unsafe csv can you see this uh, tympanic membrane can you, is it is the uh, picture uh, picture visible yes, to you yes yeah this is a same tympanic membrane and you see a perforation here okay and there is some blood here so this is called as traumatic perforation that means if somebody slaps you on the cheek suddenly over the ear the sudden impact and uh, causes great increase in the pressure in the external artery canal so that pressure gets transmitted inwards and the if the pressure is too much the tympanic membrane will rupture and give way so this causes a hole in the drum this will be usually rugged it will be not very smooth and there will be bleeding around the edges and sometimes you see this blood so this the what usually there will be some amount of history will be there that there is some trauma or is and sometimes people deny that uh, they have been slapped or something like that but when you see this type of fissure we know for a fact that it has been because of the trauma physical trauma either patient in you sometimes they put a very sharp instruments in the ear trying to clean and somebody pushes them that also can cause this type of perforation and then the other type is
what are you are selling about safe type of corporation can you see this this is a huge corporation it can be very small it can be medium large or very big so this size varies but the pathology will be usually the same and you can see that there is no tympanic membrane or drum here this whole area is bare so you can see the the mid layer contains what i described the other small ossicles this is one of the biggest ossicle in the mid layer and these are the other two ossicles the rest of the uh, communication happens above this beyond this uh, in, the, in the bony canal so we can't see that so this is a the other two ossicles so this is a perforation which we usually majority of the patients suffer from this type of perforation so this give rise to discharge from the nuclear cleft and usually they go on uh, on and off on and off there will be bleeding there will be discharge and once the discharge is treated either uh, by the medicines or if the immunity of the person is strong or the virulence of the organism is low it will get usually they will overcome this infection and the patient becomes all right and the discharge stops after some time to still another infection settles in so this is about the type of ear discharge which you usually see in the uh, safe type the other one variant i have mentioned is Can you see this? Is a uh, image visible? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. So this is what we call it as cholesteatoma. You can see that. the this part of the tympanic membrane is looks okay in the sense it is because of the discharge it is all it looks uh, unhealthy it looks uh, coated and all this is but this part is still intact but you see above that that part i described is all uh, there is nothing there so you see what you see is a discharge there this usually is a discharge which we call it as squamous epithelium squamous debris character of the ear is the ear is also lined by the same skin which we have on our all over the body and it also get replaced every 28 days or so so that layer goes off and that has to come out and then the new layer forms and again that will shed after a uh, few weeks or so and then that has to come out so it keeps coming out it naturally keeps coming out towards the external artery canal and comes out and mixes with the Uh, secretions from the outer one third of the ear to form what we call it what we call it as wax and uh, we also technically call it as cerumen so that comes out naturally it keeps coming out except for in some people where it cannot come out on its own it needs some cleaning or assistance by the uh, technical people like uh, doctors need to clean those things otherwise usually 95% 90 to 95% of the people don't need any cleaning other than probably they just need to wipe their ears when taking bath after the taking bath they just need to wipe their ears with a uh, soft cloth wrapped around their little finger other than that they are not supposed to do anything they know cleaning is required like putting buds is especially very dangerous because we think that but the uh, buds are like uh, very safe but they are not safe and with the thinking that uh, 
cotton at the tip of the bud will not cause any injury. They vigorously uh, clean the ear and then sometimes they repuff the skin of the external artery canal. That the, and then that will, because as there are already organisms or bugs within the ear canal, they will get entry into the skin deeper part and then cause infections, especially so in cases of diabetics. So I prefer, I personally advise diabetics not to clean their ear with earbud. That's my uh, honest and uh, which we have seen uh, quite a few people coming with these uh, sort of infections and those uh, diabetics get infections which are very hard to treat and they require prolonged treatment with IV antibiotics and admissions and surgeries and whatnot. So it, they should be very, very careful not to clean their ears with earbuds. Everybody, sh nobody should clean their ears with earbuds. That's a personal opinion. And also uh, my uh, experience has told me that it's not a safe way of cleaning the ear. Perfect ways, better ways are there. Like you can take a safety pin back end of the safety pin and you can scoop out the uh, wax or whatever is irritating the person or you can even use uh, uh, other uh, uh, something like uh, they used to get guge kaddi they used, we used to we call it as uh, Kannada guge kaddi that also can be used to clean because they are safer in a sense because their sharp metallic uh, instruments will be very careful when they are cleaning with those things rather than with the earbud so this causes the problem here is the skin has started growing inwards. Instead of being here, the skin has started growing inwards. Because it starts growing inwards, this whatever skin is being discommitted is not able to come out and get it cleaned on its own. So it will start getting accumulated. Once it gets accumulated, there are already, as I said, there are bacteria in the ear canal. So they'll start digesting these uh, discommitted skin and then that will give, give, release some chemicals which will in turn enhance the digestion of the bone around that. So it gives rise to a bigger bone erosion so that the skin goes further in, more collection of the discommitted skin, more bacterial action, more chemicals released, more bone digestion so it becomes a vicious cycle so this becomes bigger and bigger and bigger the opening is smaller but it can go deeper into the area in and around the ear and can cause a lot of complications so this is a about the cholestatoma okay. so there are other pictures similar to that so i'll share that with you So this is again, you can see that this part of the tympanic membrane is entirely normal. Can you make out? But this part is not. So this is where this collection is happening. And once you clean this, you'll be able to see that there is a retraction pocket. There is a pocket with a small mouth and deep neck and body, which is going beyond this, which you will not be able to see. So this is where the problem starts. So this can give us a lot of uh, complications. Okay. Uh, let me start with smallest complication is whenever there is discharge, the ear canal becomes wet. So once the ear canal becomes wet, there are chances for the fungal infection to set in. Once the fungal infection sets in, it will infect this and it will cause pain in the ear. So it will become very painful. So that has to be again cleaned, flushed and cleaned. And then we have to give antibiotics to stop the infection. And then we have to give local drops to control the ear fungal infection. And then this infection spreads backwards. And then it starts eroding the bones, the small bones. This is one of the bone. And then there are other bones behind that. So it will start eroding the bones. It will slowly, slowly compromise the blood supply to the bones. And that 
causes them to necrose that means necrose means they will start getting digested and then that will be no continuity between the bones once the continuity is lost the hearing will go down so the patient's hearing will start decreasing and then if it goes further deeper it will start affecting the nerve which supplies the face so the nerve which comes through the ear from the brain into the ear and then behind the ear it runs and then it comes out into the face to supply the expression of the muscles of the facial expression so if you have to smile or if you have to wink if you have to close your eyes if you have to raise your eyebrows or if you have to puff like if you have to fill your cheeks and do puffing you need this nerve to function if the nerve gets involved then you start seeing that that particular side the muscles will stop functioning so that's called as facial nerve palsy and then there is a balance organ as i said in my first slide as i said in my first slide the balance organ this is a balance organ so this is very close to the middle ear so this will get eroded and then this will open up so once this opens up and then get it it gets exposed to the exterior the patient start feeling giddy or they will start getting dizziness okay. so this will be affected and if the infection goes towards the brain it can cause infection of the brain causing rise to a lot of complications like meningitis and then pus between the meninges that is a covering of the brain and the bone and then if it goes into the brain it can cause cerebr cere cerebral abscess and cerebellar abscess that is the abscess of the brain and the brain stem that can give rise to severe complications and requires sometimes patient might lose consciousness and may require hospitalization and emergency evacuation of all this disease if it goes back and then affects the nerve which carries the blood from the brain to the from the brain to the heart it can cause infection and in that infections will become a thrombus that means blood will become clotted and that clot contains the infected material and that will be released periodically and that released period the release of that this causes a high rise in temperature okay on and off on and off on and off what we call it as picket fence if you have seen um, uh, there are picket fences there used to be picket fences uh, near the walls uh, near the compounds now they are there seen in the railways usually railway compounds contain those picket fences so like that there will be spikes and then it will come down to baseline but baseline is never normal never it's never it never reaches normal level it will always be the temperature will be high but it will go to spikes very peak and then comes down and then again goes up and comes so that uh, type of a fever is seen in these cases and patient will also have vomiting loss of consciousness sometimes they become uh, unconscious and comatose and so patient might have, previously they used to lose life but nowadays because of the advent of antibiotics and um uh, ct scans and all those things patients have more access to the uh, medical care nowadays so people do come but if they delay that then they will be they will sometimes they can cause complications that can be a uh, problem so those are the some of the types of discharges and the complications that they can cause so we need to worry about a discharge which is minimal which is continuous and foul smelling and sometimes if there is a discharge for long time and then suddenly it becomes blood stain we need to worry that it is causing complications and if a patient with long standing ear discharge suddenly develops pain fever vomiting or headache then it needs to be addressed it needs to be addressed immediately so you need to seek medical help at the earliest so that's about the types of discharge and ear discharge and as i said 
say whenever there is road traffic accidents you see clear here first initially there will be blood frank blood followed by discharge this again is csf which needs to be very careful you should not clean this type of air discharges on your own and whenever there is an road traffic accident and bleeding from the air there should not be any drops instilled in the air you should keep the air dry and to prevent these in fact to allow water to go into the air so whenever taking bath uh, persons are not supposed to swim but if they have to swim they have to use ear plugs they have to buy a professionally custom made ear plugs to plug the ear so that the water doesn't go into the ear and then take uh, they can go for if at all they have to do it then they can do that thing. the second one is they should avoid water getting to the air by putting a or uh, inserting a cotton wick based this thing in the air here should be plugged before they take bath and once the bath is complete they have to wipe the air dry and then take out the cotton and throw it away keep the air open all the time okay don't uh, close the air with the cotton or any other things don't use them uh, plug the air all the time so it should be open to the exterior so that it can maintain its dryness and also clean it and whenever you get infections like uh, upper respiratory tract infection like cold then it needs to be immediately treated before it becomes a ear infection okay and if the discharge in spite of these things if it is not resolved then you need to see a uh, an expert to take an opinion because it may not be simple ear drum perforation it may be some complications or it may be the serious type of ear discharge so that's about the ear discharge in general if there are any questions uh, i'll be willing to take them thank you sir um there are any sir uh, just unmute yourself Yeah, if there are any particular uh, uh, areas of this thing you want me to speak about, I, I'll be happy to do that. And one more thing. Any questions? Okay. Tell me, sir. Uh, one more thing. Uh, people using like uh, earbuds and headphones and things like that for longer time, uh, they, they are unhygienic in the sense the ear is not meant for uh, wearing all these gadgets anymore so we are supposed to use them only if it is required and we have to give the, the break once in a while so that the ear can also so get some air and becomes uh, uh, it can clean itself otherwise if you putting a uh, ear parts and things like that can mm -hmm. stimulate colonization of bacteria and carry unhealthy or un, uh, dangerous bacteria into the ear and can cause ear infections and they being on the ear skin for a long time make the ear canals uh, skin sweat and once they sweat they will become more porous that means the gaps in the skin will become bigger and bigger and the bacteria already present there will go inside and cause infections and fungal infections and things like that will be very frequent so that will become a problem so i advise people not to use them for long hours if at all required use it uh, once in a while but give a break and take out and let the ear get exposed to the exterior so that it becomes normalized any questions uh, sir if uh, any insect or uh, ant uh, usually they uh, go in, uh, inside uh, what we have to do that time if there is no issue with uh, like there is no perforation or anything like that what you can simply do is pour some water with salt salt water mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. usually come out because mm -hmm. they have to uh, they will not be able to breathe and things like that so they have to come out and they usually crawl out mm -hmm. usually they most of the time they will crawl out yes sir. 
if they don't come out and then yeah you have to again go and see an ent consultant okay so during uh, cold uh, time we usually get uh, ear pains so that's that uh, initially when there is a uh, infection in the nose the you no know, it goes to the uh, part of the uh, behind the nose there is a opening of the what we call a eustachian tube is described so that will become inflamed so because of that it becomes edematous so there is no aeration of the ear so the infection starts spreading to that they think that get blocked and once that get blocked the function of the eustachian tube is to keep the atmospheric pressure and the mid layer pressure equal so whenever there is the tube is not functioning the pressure will vary and then the because of the pressure variation the drum will either be pulled in or pushed out so whenever it happens very uh, in a sharp period of time it becomes painful that is one thing second thing is infection from the nose is going towards the ear first coming out from the ear so that's the this thing but usually it is because of this eustachian tube getting blocked and because of the block there is a negative pressure in the mid ear a negative pressure pulls the drum inside that causes pain and sometimes the pain from the throat mm -hmm. tonsils the teeth and the tongue and throat can be referred to ear that means there is no problem in the ear but the same nerve supplies the ear and these areas the person perceives this pain as an ear pain rather than the pain in the particular area like person has a dental pain teeth pain yes. that pain they usually perceive as ear pain rather than dent, uh, teeth pain so because there is poor localization of the pain in the internally externally like skin it is usually very pin pointed like if you have pain in that particular point you look at that that you will find the problem in throat and all those it's not so localized in the sense in the sense it is not so pin point accurate okay one question in chat box <clears throat> uh you can unmute uh, the person is k murthy sir you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question <clears throat> Or else, uh, they type it in chat box. Okay, should it. one keep uh, cotton when ear discharge is noticed? No. Ear discharge should be allowed to come out. It is trying to come out. You have to allow it to come out. If you can clean it, but don't put a cotton all the time. Unless you like, you are going to a function or something like that. Don't want to make a fool of yourself, and then it will stain your clothes and those sort of thing. Yes, you can put a cotton for it to temporarily. arrest the discharge from coming out and staining your clothes but you should allow it to come out you should not put cotton all the time you should not okay uh, krishna murthy sir uh, sir any more questions sir krishna murthy sir you can type in chat box okay thank you thank you sir okay any more questions sita ma'am No, no, nothing. I don't have anything. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, any uh, uh, tips for us uh, to keep uh, ears uh, good way from your side? Yeah, as I said, whenever you take bath, all you have to do is uh, you wrap your finger around a soft cloth like a banyan cloth or a t-shirt or something like that, and just I'll just show you, ma'am. it like that that's it you just clean it that's it there is no need for you to put buds and things like that and people think that if water goes into the ear something will happen nothing will happen if there is no hole in the drum if there is no ear uh, other problem water going into the ear will not cause any problem it will come out in anyway. so don't try to clean it with buds and things like that sometimes it can be uh, irritating with you know, water going in the ear and uh, running around when you move your head Yeah, that's the only problem. If that is causing severe uh, uncomfortable, then you can clean it with buds, but don't try to rub the ears with, with the bud. That's the only tip. Uh, rest is don't try to clean the ear regularly by daily. 
there is no need for us to clean that like that only thing you only time you have to clean that is during bath when you take bath you wrap your little finger on either side with a soft cloth something like a banyan cloth or a t-shirts and then just wipe it once that should be it one more question in chat box <clears throat> mm. are there any common ear drop one can use in general to keep the ear clean no i don't think you need to put any ear drops as i said ear should be always dry if there is no problem in the ear you are supposed to ear is supposed to be dry like any part of our skin wherever it's outside it should, it's dry the skin is supposed to be dry you are not supposed to keep it wet if it becomes wet you have to wipe it and make it dry because whenever it becomes wet it becomes porous that means the gaps between the cells will increase so the Uh, bacteria which are already present because there are n number of bacteria which are already living in harmony with us they are there in all of part of our body in the skin including so they will live in harmony unless they get an opportunity to get access into the inner parts of the skin they will not cause any harm once they get access they will cause infections so they will become infected severe infections pain and all those things will set in so not to put any drops there is no cleaning drops as such people advise to put drops and all those things no unless there is a hard wax which type like wax becomes very hard we give drops to make it soft so that we can clean it easily hard wax is very difficult to clean because it's stuck to the skin so if you move around because it's stuck to the skin it will be very painful because then it will impinge on the skin and cause pain so those sort of thing it will not be possible for us to clean so we will advise drops the other time we advise drops is when there is fungal infection in the ear and the third one is when there is a perforation in the drum and we want the drops to go into the mid ear that's the only three conditions for you to put drops otherwise you normal persons with a normal ear should not put any drops in the ear not even oil there is no harm if you are fine but if you keep putting the oil Uh, time and again, it will become wet. As I said, it will become porous. And if your immunity, for whatever reasons, is low, or if you are diabetic or something like that, it will become a proper infection. And people putting like um, um, clove and uh, even uh, other things in the ear is also not good. Okay. Mm, is there any Ayurvedic medicines to keep our ear healthy? as i said uh, we don't require any medicine for you to clear your ear skin it's it should be dry that's the only thing you need to take care um ayurveda i am not a very you know, like i am not an expert in advising all this thing. so but uh, as as far as my knowledge goes uh, there is no need for you to put any medication for you to keep your ear clean it is by for, by itself it is trying to clean itself you have to allow it to clean itself only uh, roughly about as i said about 3 to 5% of the people will require uh, some sort of cleaning by others like uh, medical expert those people need to come and get it cleaned otherwise uh, i don't think you need to uh, try to put any medication take any medication for your skin so usually care. keeping uh, wax uh, things inside ear is good for uh, ear usually there is one uh, uh, like uh, usually the people will say that wax in ear is good like that what is the comment Lit- yeah 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 little wax is there that is there for a purpose it is basically it is to trap these bugs and small insects crawling inside your ear it's there it's slightly sticky so it will trap them like ants and things like that small small ants going trying into crawling into the ears and small insects trying to cra- crawling into the ear will trap that and also it will trap other foreign bodies going into the ear so it it's a little bit of wax is good a little bit of wax is that that should not be the idea because wax is there for some purpose you have to allow it to be there whatever is extra will come out so you allow it to come out you just clean it whatever comes out don't try to clean the ear to such an extent that it looks uh, very clean very clean ear is also dangerous <laughs> sir one more question uh, what, what really makes uh, older people to not hear properly what will be the change 
the change happening is uh, as we age, like any other organ, there is a physiological deterioration of the function. Similarly, in the ear, there are uh, hair cells. We call it micro hair cells. These micro hair cells gradually start decreasing in number as we age. Okay. So like we lose hair in the head, similarly, the hair cells will also come down in number. So once they start coming down in number, the hearing capacity gradually start decreasing. Till start with uh, like usually they stop hearing whispers and then they come to a stage where they can stop hearing normal conversation and then they come to a stage where they can't even hear a person shouting next to them. So that's a gradual progression. It happens as a physiological phenomenon. It is aging related. It's nothing to like some people prematurely do that. Like they start losing hearing very early, there could be some problem in them. Like there is a genetic problem. Second one is they are diabetics. They lose start hearing early. Okay. And if something is going wrong in the brain, that can also cause hearing loss prematurely. So if it is happening prematurely, like we are supposed to uh, start having hearing problems around 60, 70, you start having 30, 40 years age, you need to go and get it checked. If it is happening at 60, 70 years, that's normal. It's a, mm. And also, as we are seeing now, the noise pollution is too much. Uh, there, is, there, no, there was a time when there was so, not so much of noise, but people living in cities and towns and urban areas, they get exposed to a lot of these traffic noise and other noises. The noise pollution is high. So we are tending to lose the hearing more and more earlier than the previous generation. You could... You could see these previous generations, uh, people at 90, 80, 90, they could use hear perfectly. They had normal teeth, they had vision normal. But now people we are seeing, uh, even 30, 40, they, uh, even 10 years, 12 years, people start wearing specs and their hearing goes down 30, 40 years and their teeth is uh, rotting at 40, 50 years. So this is all because of uh, all these um, contaminations with the food, environment, air, water, everything is polluted. So that's one of the factors. Usually they put uh, uh, ear machines, right, sir? Is there yeah. any medicines, direct medicines to improve hearing uh, effect like that? At present, no. therapy and all those things, they are trying that, those sort of things, okay? So slowly they might come out with those things. But at present, the only solution is wearing hearing aids. Hearing aids have come in different shapes and sizes and so, and there are different budget these things. Also, you can, um, like, they are starting from 20,000 to, to two and a half lakh, three lakh, four lakhs there. They are like mobile phones to, with a lot of features and all those things. So you need to get it checked and then you take a trial and then decide which is good for you and which is within your budget and then but one thing we need to do, one thing we need to remember is that once we start uh, having hearing problems, we start wearing hearing aids. Otherwise, what happens? There is what is called as disuse atrophy. So if you don't use that part of the brain for a long time, that part of the brain stops functioning. It's like a uh, uh, If mm -hmm. you don't go and look at your site for a long time, somebody else will fence it off and say that is mm -hmm. there. Similarly, surrounding areas in the brain will start occupying this area and it will push it out. So this part of the brain will stop functioning altogether. So after a certain time, if you start wearing hearing aids also, it may not function. So we need to be aware that uh, that has to be taken care. So whenever they find it difficult to communicate with others, they should start wearing hearing aids at the earliest possible. So they can continue to engage that part of the brain and then that keeps and healthy that part of the brain is healthy sir what mechanism that ear uh, machine is doing sir it just what amplifies the sound it amplifies whatever it gathers and then it directly gives it to the bone from the bone it goes to the nerves and then get that gets uh, is there any the... frequency or any uh, restricted for them uh, for that, that, that needs, they, they'll check that they'll do a pure tone audiometry test before they give a hearing aid and then according to that graph they'll tune the frequencies of that machine so that that person only can wear it 
Mm-hmm. It is customized in the sense it is individual. You can't wear somebody else's uh, um, uh, uh, visual activity problem. You can't wear the same this thing. You have to customize it according to your needs. Same way, hearing aids are also customized. And the part which goes into the ear is again unique. In the sense, everybody's ear shimmers that person's ear. I can wear his hearing aid. No, you might wear it for some times, but it becomes very uncomfortable after some time because it doesn't fit into the shape of your ear and it starts pressing on the skin and it becomes unbearable. So you have to, that part, what is, what is called as mold, M-O-U-L-D, mold, has to be custom made for that particular person. Person's ear. No, you can't wear right ear to left ear, left ear to right ear. Okay, they are different. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think uh, at uh, four o'clock <laughs> we can wind up here. Uh, thank you very much, sir. It's all uh, inside things which are unknown for us and a uh, very informative session for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much and uh, I hope I was of help to you and I could yes, sir. you <laughs> a lot of things. I you some information which could be useful. Uh, mm. So thank you for uh, uh, hosting me. We have pleasure, sir, to have you on Creative. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.